Hello everyone, so today we are going to discuss the equations of kinematics for constant acceleration in two-dimensional motion. So last um, lesson, or our previous lesson, was about the one-dimensional motion where we use the four equations of kinematics. So today we are going to have uh, two-dimensional motion. So ibig sabihin, meron din tayong dalawang set ng um, equations. So we have here... Uh, one for the x component and then one for the y component. So this is the equations of kinematics that we are going to use for this lesson or for this discussion. Okay? So hindi pa rin mawawala si displacement, acceleration, final velocity, initial velocity, and elapsed time. So these are the variables na kailangan pa rin in order for us to solve problems with two-dimensional motion. So Dito, i-a-apply natin yung uh, our lesson from the review on mathematical tools or review on mathematical concepts where we have the trigonometric functions and then uh, where we are dealing with vectors okay, with different um, directions. Okay? So here, I have two tables. So dalawang table yung gagamitin natin. Okay, we are still going to use our previous table in one dimensional. This is the equations of kinematics for constant acceleration. Tapos, uh, ito na siya pag naging two dimensional. So, your V naught, kung dito V naught lang siya, when we are dealing with two dimensional, we now have V naught x. And then, uh, pag nasa y naman, we have V naught y. Okay, this one. Okay, so this is the initial velocity in y direction and then the other one is the initial velocity in x direction or in x axis. Okay, and then also uh, your final velocity instead of v sub f, we will have it as vx or v sub x for the final velocity in x axis and then v sub y for the final velocity in y axis. Okay, and then x for the displacement kapag nasa x-axis and then y for the y-axis. So here, uh, kahit naka two-dimensional yung problem natin, we are still going to uh, deal with the problems na naka x-axis yung siya tapos i-separate din natin yung y-axis na given. Okay, so for the second example we have here, an airplane is moving horizontally with a constant velocity of positive 150 meter per second at an altitude of 1050 meter. The directions to the right and the upward have been chosen as the positive directions. The plane releases a care package that falls to the ground along a curved trajectory, ignoring air resistance determining the time required for the package to hit the ground. Okay, so in this case, we have here an airplane so horizontally moving your airplane natin and then it releases a care package. This one is the package and then it follows a curved trajectory. Okay? So the movement of the package is not directly uh, I'm sorry, vertically hit the ground. Okay? So hindi siya drop directly, na mahulog siya diretso. Kasi since the airplane is moving, so, yung package natin will follow a curved trajectory. Okay, so, this one. This is the curved trajectory followed by the care package. Now, in this problem, uh, we have to determine the time required for the package to hit the ground. So, in this case, kahit um, we can deal with the X component data or the Y component data, kahit saan doon sa dalawa na data, we can still get your, we can still determine your time it's because the same yung time natin uh, when we are dealing with both components. So both X and Y components will have the same time. So uh, ano yung difference ng problem na ito from the first problem? So for the, from the first problem, you can observe yung spacecraft natin nag-fly upward siya. Okay? But with another, with again, a curved trajectory pero pa Nag, um, nag accelerate siya in this manner, pakya. Okay? Unlike for this package, pababa naman siya. So, in this problem, 
ibig sabihin, we can have your given. Okay. So uh, before that, we will write first the given dito sa problem talaga. So we have here your velocity. So since it is a constant velocity with respect to x, so your final and initial velocity is the same. And then we also have the altitude. So this is your y. Then siya. You can observe negative yung y natin. It's because the package is going downward. Okay. So pababa kasi yung package natin, that is why we now have a negative altitude or a negative y displacement. Okay. And then we will have your acceleration due to gravity, that's negative 9.8 meter per second squared. So, kailan natin siya pwedeng gamitin when we are talking about um, two-dimensional problems. So, gagamitin lang natin si acceleration due to gravity when we have problems like this. Kung yung objects natin sa problem, is ganito yung movement niya. Pababa. Pagpataas yan siya, your acceleration due to, I'm sorry, your acceleration with respect to y will be different. Pero pag downward gani, I'm sorry, if downward ang movement ng motion, I'm sorry, if downward ang motion ng object, we will have, we can have, or we can use your acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, and then we will also have your initial velocity with respect to y as zero. Now, why zero? It's because yung movement ng uh, plane natin is horizontal, okay, given that we have a constant velocity that's positive 150 meter per second. So here, since horizontal yung movement ng plane, ibig sabihin, yung initial velocity natin with respect to y is zero. Okay, so we have now zero meter second. Okay, and then what we are looking for in the problem is the time. Okay, so you can also write this given in the table, in a table. Okay, so we have here your um, y, your ay, by, b not y, and then your time. Okay, so meron tayong y, that's negative 1,050 meters, your ay, negative 9.8, meter per second squared, your v not y is not given, your initial velocity is zero, and then your final, I'm sorry, your time is what we are looking for in the problem. So, hahanapin natin sa table kung saan yung appropriate equation could be used to solve this problem. So, we have here equation number three. Okay, so, y is equal to v not y, time plus one half a y b squared. Okay? So, ayan siya. So, I wrote it this way. Kasi with respect to y yung component natin. Okay? Since time yung hahanapin, so we have to transpose our equation. So, in this case, dalawa yung t natin. So, we have here t and then so, what I will do, I plug in ko muna yung values. Okay? So, here is 0 times time. Okay? Since wala, wala pa yung time natin, hindi pa given yung time natin. So, I'll have it as letter T plus 1 half, and then your AY, that's negative 9.8 meter per second squared times time. So, ano mangyayari dito? Zero times time, this becomes zero. So, yung itratranspose na lang natin is this um, equation na maiwan. So, I have your negative meter is equal to one half negative 9.8 meter per second square times t square. So, para mas madali, isisolve ko na ito siya diretsya sa calculator. One half of our negative 9.8. Okay, so 9. So, one half times negative 9.8. So, you'll get negative 4.9. So, here, 50 
negative 4.9 and then you have your t square. Okay? So, ililipat natin okay, si negative 4.9 t squared sa kabilang side. Okay? How? So, you divide both sides by negative 4.9. So, here, ididivide ko siya. 1 over negative 4.9 meter per second squared. And then here also negative 4.9 meter per second squared. Okay, so para makancel dito si negative 4.9 and then we will be left with t squared. Okay. So here we now have 50 meters over negative 4.9 meter per second squared okay, is equal to T squared. So you divide these numbers, you have divided by negative 9, sorry, 4.9. You will get positive 214. Okay, so this is 214.29. Okay, point okay. So yung uh, unit natin for this one. It will actually be second squared. Okay? So, makancel si M. And then we will have T squared. So, dapat T lang yun siya. Okay? To get our time. So, what will happen? T square root both sides. T squared. So, square root of 214.29, you will get. 14.64. So your unit now is seconds. So this is now the time, okay, the time required for the package to hit the ground. So that's for example number two. Now, we are going to have problems in projectile motion. So, in this case, you can see here an image at the shot. This is a place kicker where he kicks a football. So, nagland siya dito na point. So, at this path is what we call the projectile. So, kaya natin siya tinatawag na projectile motion. Okay? And then, we have here your maximum height and then your range naman yung tawag sa uh, maximum uh, X displacement. Or kung gaano kalayo yung ball or yung object after it was kicked off from its initial position. Okay, and then your height. This is your maximum height. We call it as your capital letter H. Okay. And then to solve this problem, we will write first your given. Okay, so your given is V naught for your initial velocity, that's 22 meter per second, and then your, your theta, that's 40 degrees. Okay. And then to get your theta, we are going to use your uh, trigonometric function. So we have your V naught y is equal to V naught sine theta. Now, bakit y? Okay. It is because we are looking for the maximum height. Now, the si maximum height is at your x axis. I'm sorry, at your y axis. So that is y we are going to use data from your y component. Okay, so here we have v naught sine theta. Paano siya naging v naught sine theta? This was uh, discussed from your review on mathematical tools. So, your review ko kayo ulit. For example, this is your v naught or your initial velocity. This is your hypotenuse. Okay, and then from your x-axis, it forms 40 degree angle. Okay, ito yung theta. Okay, this is your v naught x, and then this one is your v naught y. So, yung v naught y ninyo magiging opposite side, since opposite siya ng theta natin, and then your hypotenuse is your initial velocity. So, you write here your saw, okay, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and then I substitute v naught y as your opposite, and then v naught as your hypotenuse. And then we divide both sides. I'm sorry, we multiply both sides with v naught. 
para makancel siya dito, and then we will be left with V not Y, and then we now have V not sine theta. That is the reason why we have here V not sine theta. Okay, and then substitute the values, you have 22 meter per second sine 40 degrees. You will get 14.14 meter per second. Now, your acceleration due to gravity, that's negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Your final velocity is zero, bucket zero. When we are talking about maximum height, at maximum height, your final velocity is always zero. Okay, and then we are looking for your y or your maximum height. We will call it as your y displacement. Okay, and then um, I will try to make a table out of this given, so you have y, ito yung hahanapin. Your AY, negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, and then um, your BY, that's 0. Your V not Y, that's 14.14 14 meter per second. And then you don't have a time. Okay, so we are going to use your table and then look for the appropriate equation to be used in this problem. So we have here. Okay, equation number four. So equation number four, with respect to y, we have by squared is equal to v not y squared plus 2ay not y. Okay, now you substitute uh, the values are fake. You are going to transpose first our equation na dapat yung y lang yung matira sa isang side. So we now have by squared. Ililipat ka dito sa kabilang side, so b not y. So this will become negative. Then 2ay, y. And then you divide both sides by 2ay, Para makancel siya dito sa kabilang side. Okay. Then, you now have by squared minus b not y squared is equal to y. Sorry. Over 2ay. Okay. And then, substitute lang ninyo agad yung given. So, we have 0 squared minus 14.14 14 squared over 2 negative 9.8 meter per second squared equal to 1. You know, the answer will be, you have here um, negative 14.14 14 .14 squared okay, divided by negative 9.8, sorry, 2 times negative 9.8. You will get 10 meters. This is now your y, or your maximum height. So that's how you solve for the maximum height. Now, for the second example, for the projectile motion, we have a play, uh, the same problem, but with a different uh, missing uh, variable. For this one, we are going to look for the time of flight between the kickoff and the landing. So, uh, we will still use your given, uh, the same given, the V not Y okay, from your V not sine theta which is equivalent to 14.14 14 meter per second square, I'm sorry, per second. And then our y for this case is zero. A bucket, it's because the ball already landed. Now at this end point, your y is equivalent to zero. And then our Acceleration due to gravity that's negative 9.8 meter per second squared. And then what we are looking for in the problem is your time. Okay, so I will make a table 
This is y, a y, b y. V not y and b not. So time is question mark, v not y is 14. And then our a y that's negative 9.8. Then our y is zero. So from this one, you look for the appropriate equation that can be used. We have here equation number three. So your equation number three with respect to y is y equal to v not y times time plus one half a y. Okay, so for this one, okay, so here you can observe that we have two letter t's. So I will substitute first our given okay, and then you have your 14.14 14 meter per second time and then plus one half negative 9.8 meter per second squared t squared. So you can observe na yung equation natin dito, this one, you now have a quadratic equation. So um, I'll show you without the, I will disregard first your um, unit okay, and then divide ko na siya one half, one half times negative 9.8, that's negative 4.9, so minus 4.9 t squared. So observe ninyo, you now have a quadratic equation. So to solve for time, Ibig sabihin, 0 is equal to um, 14, 14. Uh, this is t minus, I'm sorry, negative 49, 4.9 squared. Ayan siya. Okay, so I just rewrite it. So, ilalabas ko yung isang t. So, you will be left with 14.14 14 minus 4.9 t. Okay? So, using your uh, memories or your previous lesson sa, I think in your pre-cal, maybe, or your in basic calculus, you will have your, this one is equivalent to t equal to zero, and then the other t is, um, you now have uh, zero is equal to 14.14 14 minus 4.9 times time. Okay, and then I will transpose this one, so this will be negative 14.14 14 is equal to negative 4.9 times time. And then I will divide both sides by negative 4.9. Okay, so I will get okay, negative 14.14 14 divided by negative 4.9. Okay, that is 2.89. So this is 2.89 is equal to 9. So from this answers you have two answers for time the zero and the 2.89 seconds so from the problem you are going to determine the time of flight between takeoff and landing so kung zero yung answer natin for the time it makes a um, the object has have have not or haven't moved yet okay or the object has not been moving, kapag uh, yung answer naman natin is 2.89 seconds, it means that the object moved from its initial position. So yung answer dito for this problem is the 2.89 seconds. Okay, yan yung time that it took for the ball from its kickoff and its landing. Okay, so for the last example, for the projectile motion, we have here the same word problem, but with a different missing variables. In this case, we are going to look for the range of the projectile. So this one, 
So in getting the range of the project file, it is not um, necessary for us to use the equations of kinematics, since we are going to have the formula for velocity that x over time. Okay, so in this case, we have to solve for v naught x, okay, that's equivalent to v naught uh, cosine theta. Okay, so y cosine theta, we have, again, your right triangle, this one. This is v naught, this is your theta, and then this is your v naught theta. So this is your adjacent side, and then this is your hypotenuse. So, which means that we are going to use your cap, or your cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so for this one, we have 22 cosine 40 degrees. Okay, and then you will get 22 cosine 40, that's 16.85 meter per second. Okay. And then from this equation, since we are look looking for x or your r or the range, okay, so we transpose t to the other side by multiplying both sides by t, then this will cancel out. So t times v that's equal to x. Okay. And then we substitute this is now your v not x. So our time from the previous um, Problem is equivalent to 2.89 seconds and then times your 16.85 meter per second. That is now your range or your R. So have here 16.85 times 2.89. So you will get 48.7. So this is 48.7 meters. This is now your range okay, or your x. So in getting the range, you have to look for the time first and then you multiply it with your initial velocity with respect to x. Okay, So that's all for the examples for the projectile motion. So if you have questions, clarifications, and suggestions, please don't forget, uh, don't hesitate to uh, send me a message through my Facebook Messenger, and then I hope you understand this topic. Okay? There are a lot of examples uh, in our in the reference that I gave you, the physics by Cottmel, and then Cottmel and Johnson, and then you can also look for other references and other videos of examples through YouTube, and then that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, excel at all times, and God bless.